Hello everyone, Vicki Ashard with Nature's Best. Today I'm going to be painting a deer for my daughter and my son-in-law's children. And later it's going to be a puzzle. So here I am drawing over my drawing and uh, my transfer paper is underneath my paper and then my watercolor is underneath my transfer paper. Putting in the details I like to do that so that I know where my dark colors are. Putting in the sticks in the background, that's going to be on grass. This in my daughter's backyard. Creating the shadows there, lots of shadows. Checking my uh, paper to make sure I'm putting those details in. And if I don't, I just press harder with my pencil. taking my tape off and now I'm showing you face soap and some water on my brush to put the masking fluid on so the masking fluid will save my white areas there are a lot of white spots in this deer around the eye it was so cute this deer was just adorable You know, I painted other animals. I, you know, I first painted a dog, and then I uh, painted giraffes, a monkey, tiger cub, and an uh, eagle in flight. And uh, just love painting that. Okay, before we start painting, I'd like to talk a little bit about the colors we're going to be using. And I used my color chart and saw that my deer was a mix of pyro red and hooker's green. And that's why I just love this color chart. I don't have to think about it much. Which is, I'll show you what it is. It's this color here. Let's pull our little piece of paper up. And see how that looks? Grayish brown. Not too brown. Had a little bit of gray in there. Isn't that amazing? Pyro red and hooker's green. Do you believe it? Okay. And I did see a little bit of brown in him though, and I just love brown in deer. So this is raw sienna and burnt umber together with this color, these two colors also. It's a combination. Okay. Okay, this is a combination of uh, pyro red and hooker's green uh, for the darker part of the deer. And if I want to make it a little grayer, then I just add more water. And it was that I added more pyro red than the green to make the darker, uh, which is, you know, it's going to be almost a black. And that's what I want. Okay, now for the grass, um, I love green. And I saw several uh, colors in the grass of the green, several different colors of the grass. And I used hookers, I'm going to be using hookers green, and I'm going to be adding Prussian blue to that hookers green to make the darker areas of the grass and sap green and then the olive uh, kind of like the olive lighter uh, color uh, I'm going to be using uh, sap green and gamboge so those are going to be our colors that we're going to be using a little bit about the um, uh, hooker's green I want to talk about this uh, it's from Windsor Newton I you probably heard me uh, say that I love M. Grand paints and all these are other ones are M. Grand paints because they don't dry out in the palette they're they have a little honey in them uh, and so I bought this you know when I first started painting like 2015 and I had to add this vegetable glycerin to it I got it at the health food store uh, because when I had it in my palette uh, it dried out so I recommend hooker's green because it's a beautiful color but when you put it in your palette I recommend that you don't put a lot uh, because if there is, if it stays in your palette uh, it'll probably dry out um, and the vegetable glycerin did help just wanted to let you know about that 
Well, here I'm going to be painting in my background using my greens and my number 30 round. I love to use this brush because you can get right up to your subject and it gets in all the nooks and crannies. It has a really good point to it. You don't have to worry about the color getting on your subject. And later you'll see me uh, going in, you know, making sure that there's enough green in the background. And I even uh, put more background. I stopped the video and put more background, more green in there. And I'm not fussy because, you know, grass, you want it to look natural. The green areas weren't all the same color. Drying my paint between my glazes. And now I'm starting to put the shadows in using that uh, Hooker's Green and Prussian Blue. There's a lot of shadows in the background uh, there where my daughter lives. Now I think that it's not as dark as I need it. So I'm adding ultramarine blue and that was really pretty and I just loved it. it made, the ultramarine made it, uh, blue made it a little darker. They have like poles in their backyard, um, a few uh, with the electrical wires and it made sh makes shadows um, and that deer was actually in front of a hill and I learned you know when I started painting about 2015 I learned not to put ex uh, you know not extreme amount of shadows in because um, it, it, it's just too overpowering uh, you know for the painting here I'm adding more colors in the grass There was a little brown on the grass, so, you know, I added that. My burnt sienna, my little ultima, uh, uh, little burnt, burnt umber. Now I'm using my fan brush to paint those grass blades in. I just love that brush. And then that off camera, I did add more green to it. Now if you notice, when I'm starting to paint the deer, I um, I'm on the right side of that ear I left out part of the green but later I fixed that and I'm painting the deer but I'm actually taking some of the color out with my Kleenex because I didn't want to put too much dark and too much you know not too much of the dark in there at first because I didn't I felt that if I did I'd get that deer uh, too dark uh, because there, you know, I, I start painting some of this dark in. And that, that's actually, you know, why I love watercolor because, you know, now like that part there with the ear, uh, above the ear, uh, it's easily correctable. All you gotta do is just put more, more color in there. Watercolor, you know, is, is so nice to work with because uh, all your mistakes you, you can basically correct. Um, if there's too much color then, then you just uh, blot some off with some with your brush with water on your brush and then blot it out with the Kleenex. And that's what a lot of uh, watercolor is. It's, it's painting in color, taking painting out and eventually you know you'll get the look that you want. Painting some of the hairs on the deer. And I just, I fell in love with that deer. I took about 10 pictures uh, of it and uh, the deer would, it saw an airplane and it looked at the airplane and then it heard birds and it was looking all around and then it looked at me. And so that's the, the picture I chose. Uh, and you know it's like when I look at all the pictures like it looks like uh, it, the deer is moving you know uh, it's like one of those flip charts it's just, it was such a cute deer and I, I think this deer was probably probably only about two years old uh, looked, looked like a young deer to me and when I'm painting the eyes um, 
the darker areas I paint with burnt umber and the lighter color in the middle I paint with um, burnt sienna and I did not see any highlight in that eye so I didn't put it but when you put the two colors um, you will see a little distinction in in the eyeball itself and then um, so that's why I'm adding the burnt sienna in the middle there and then the, the nose uh, the part of the deer there, I don't uh, put too much color in the middle, which makes it look dimensional. And I, I, and I make sure I want it, I want it to make sure I got that look too. I'm just making some more dark areas in that deer. And I really uh, love, like I said before, I love painting animals. So, you know, if you can, I encourage you to check out my website, www.naturesbestart.com, in the watercolor gallery. And um, what we, what I've done is all the my animals that I painted, we were offering them in prints, because I think they look just lovely in. Um, and adorable in children's room and baby's room, like a grouping of three. And um, so I'm really excited about offering that. Now, you saw me pull up my um, drawing there. What I was doing was, you'll see that on the legs, on the, on the left side, I couldn't quite get those legs correct, but I finally realized that I was missing a line. And um, in one of the legs and so uh, looking at my drawing and then also my photo um, back and forth you know it'll it, you'll eventually get your drawing correct if you can't figure out quite what's going on with things you know I'm, I'm, I consider myself uh, a, a detailed artist and also I, I love to paint realistic drawings as much as I can and so that's why I use um, my smaller brushes for the details really helps and um, making sure I get in those correct colors the darkers and the lighters the light colors there and I am so excited that my husband made that puzzle out of the the last video that I made the rabbit and then he's gonna make you know a, a puzzle out of this for our other grandchildren uh, for Christmas um, Christmas is next week I, oh my gosh do you believe it oh so uh, I've had fun preparing and now that I we're doing this I'm really excited and happy holidays to all of you too I hope that everything's going well with your preparing and planning there I'm fixing that um, that little green there see you just um, put a couple glazes on it and it'll be fine now I'm showing you that I corrected that leg which I was so happy about putting that grass in there above the ear I'm making my darker areas darker And now I'm starting to uh, take off that masking fluid. That's called a rubber cement eraser. And I love using that because it's, it's, it's really rough. And so it, it really helps to take all that off with that. making sure that I have it all off and I wanted to go back and um, put a little of the gray on top of that white but keeping it around that eye
And the picture at the end of the video where my husband is um, figuring out how to make that puzzle, he's in the, our art studio and one day I want to give you a tour of our art studio. He actually made a really nice, um, carved out a really nice area in our basement is, uh, since 1995. And that's where I do my press floral work. And he's, uh, he does our matting and framing. And uh, so I want to show you all the, he made his uh, workbench area and a whole bunch of stuff I want to show you. He's a, he was an engineer for 32 years and um, he knows how to figure out a lot of stuff out. So it's, it's wonderful working together. Actually, so many people say, oh, you work with your husband? Yes, <laughs> we work, we've been working together. And you know, you have to learn how to work with your partner. It, it, it's uh, something that, you know, takes time. You learn uh, different things and it's, it's worked out really well. We help each other, encourage each other. And, uh, been fun so okay so let's see what we're doing here now okay so now I'm going in and I'm using my number four brush and I'm putting eyelashes on the eyes oh I just love this deer I just I just love the way he's turning out I think I surprised myself uh, and um, just can't wait to give these puzzles to my grandchildren. Uh, painting the sticks, uh, about three different colors. I like to go in and not make it all the same. Um, using all my colors there, my, my darker colors and my brown colors, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and the hooker's green and pyro red together to make a, a black with my ultramarine it makes a darker black actually oh isn't he so cute oh i love him <laughs> i do say so myself And I wanted to go in with my gel pen to revive a little bit of, of that white. Um, especially that tail was really white. And uh, I want to put some hair, hair like uh, strokes in there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, really helps my channel I'm putting a little highlight on that stick signing my name and taking the tape off after I dry it love that border Let me show you in a picture. There's my husband in, in the, our art studio. Here's a picture of the puzzle he made out of the painting I made last week. And a picture of the deer. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, happy creating.